dude, what what's the deal? What's the deal with art? Like, what are we talking about here? What is what is art? Because, what? like, uh, you know, something like bodybuilding or powerlifting, people can't define what it is. Or, or somebody might say golf. That's not a sport. And it's like, well, well, then what is it? Is it a hobby? Is it an art? Is it a like? What do you think makes something an art? Uh, like in your, I guess in your well, eyes, I, I think it's very similar. You know, to me, art has no rules. There is, I think, principles that people believe in. But at the same time, it's not limited to that still. Uh, it's, it's some sort of form of expression. You know, you have an idea up here. You have a vision of your body, of your life. You do the work to create it. You have a vision for what you see on a canvas or a sculpture. You are resourceful and you find a way to create it. So I think it's very similar. Uh, we're here today with David Garibaldi. He's uh, local. He lives in uh, Sacramento. He's got his uh, place in Sacramento. And uh, super excited to have you here. I Thank first you. learned about you by just, um, I think I was checking out Instagram. I was trying to look at girls' butts, and then mm -hmm. your ugly ass came up for some reason, which I have <laughs> so, interrupted, interrupted my butt session. Butts and then my ugly face is your algorithm, <laughs> so we're even. <laughs> yeah, you, you, threw, you threw me off there. No, I, I saw you, um, I think it may be making an image of like Steph Curry uh, at... Uh, halftime of a basketball game. Yes, that and was would, probably the NBA Finals. You're just like chucking paint on the thing, and I'm like, what is going on? And then it turned into this amazing painting. Thank you, yeah. It's, it's pretty much how you describe what I do. It's I basically throw paint and hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> hope it all works out. Um, but yeah, I, you know, that's uh, very blessed to be able to, you know, perform these paintings all over the world. And But, you know, I'm from here in Sacramento. Is it, uh, do you believe it's a gift? Uh, in some way, I believe partly. Uh, it's part What's of it. What's the other is, part? Well, the part the other part is just hard work. I mean, you know, yes, I was wired a certain way to to you know, you know, dr do sketches like this or to draw certain things. But at some point, talent is not enough, and I was curious enough to take classes, to do some drawings, and just you know, figure out a way to get better so I can continue it. Um, otherwise, you kind of hit a wall and you get bored. Which there was other things in my life. It wasn't always uh, art. I was into music, and then at some point I wasn't as curious about it, and I was like, "Nah, I'm good. I'm mm -hmm. done." Art was that thing. There was other things too. We won't get into the <laughs> dance right now. The dance, <laughs> the dancing was going for a little bit, and then I got again. I was like, "I met, I hit a wall." Yeah, like, I'm not. I don't want to progress beyond that. But uh, it's it's a mixture of how you're wired, the gift, and then just your curiosity to see where else can I take this kids that are listening to this need to pay attention because you need to amplify your strengths you know people are always trying to work on their weaknesses and of course you want to be a well-rounded person you want yeah. to be better um if you're so submerged in art then maybe you're missing out on relationships friendships uh business opportunities like there's a lot of people that are really uh amazing artists in a lot of ways whether it be a musician photographer somebody that paints whatever it might be that are kind of living in their car you know, day by day because they're so obsessed with it, but they're not kind of, they're not living their life in some other ways. They don't have enough balance. You know, uh, one of the number one questions I get from young artists or creators, they say, uh, like, what advice would you give me? Uh, they're like, say they're teenagers. And I'm like, go create what you're inspired by. Go collect stamps, kid. <laughs> or that. Get out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're such an inspirational figure. <laughs> uh, but no, I just like, go, go live life. Go be inspired. Because at some point, if you do pursue this and you get busy enough, you you get you get tired and you need to be know what to tap into to be inspired. So I'm like, first thing you do, forget creating, forget painting, forget trying to be like me. Go be inspired by life. Find out what you love, whether whether it's animals, music, In and Out cheeseburgers, which is one of my early inspirations. <laughs> um, Always comes back yeah. to In and Out. If yeah. I could Every make money show has in painting In and Out burgers, <laughs> I would do it. Yeah. So In and Out, if you're listening. Holler what about me, the dude. French fries? You know, I mean, you can't compete oh, with no. McDonald's. French fries are amazing, oh, even oh, though they're oh, probably yeah. not real. Over time, I, <laughs> this is my theory. Over time, I feel like they have like slowly. They have not. They're not potatoes anymore, mm. and we just are so hooked on them. Like I don't care what chemical it is. I'm Something gonna, weird happened. But I love along it along the way. I love it. That's what that's called. I don't want to see how they make it. How how do you remain creative as you've uh, gotten to be more busy? Because it seems like you're you're very busy nowadays. You're traveling and, and you're doing this all over the place. And you have you have 
uh, obligations. Mm-hmm. It started out with things that you wanted to do, yeah, when you wanted to do them yeah. on your time, on your dime. Now you probably are getting paid to do an appearance, paid to go somewhere, mm-hmm. and you have a strict schedule. Uh, I would imagine that you probably <laughs> you probably have a little bit of trouble with with the scheduling of stuff. Being someone who's creative, correct? Yeah, I mean uh, naps and wine help uh, <laughs> along the way. I'm gonna write that. A down. lot of coffee. <laughs> well, Phil's coffee. Uh, man, you know, I remember when I first started. Uh, I had it was in 2003. I had lost my job. I got fired. What, what Actually, I didn't doing? lose it. I was. I won't say the bank, but I was a phone banker. Like you would call in and you'd ask for your account balance. I. I you like, got fired from that. Well, I got. I like to round it up because I'm an optimist. I'm like, well, you, you have 35 cents in your account, not you know 25 cents. But uh, <laughs> apparently, that's illegal. Oh no. <laughs> hey, bro, you're doing good. No, no, you don't need to. Yeah, this is the greatest okay. thing though. My manager called me into her office. She sat me down with like my my final paper. She's like, you know those drawings you do at your desk. Yeah, she's like, you should go do that. Wow. And so, well, I had no choice because I didn't have a job anymore. <laughs> but uh, so I think because I started, and also my car got repossessed, I was about to be evicted from my apartment. Thank God, uh, the, the landlord sh- let me trade a mural on the front of it for rent. Uh, thank you, Gary. And uh, which is a whole other crazy story. But I, I think as I started off, I, was like, I, I knew that I had this passion to create, but there was still. I still felt this obligation to my gift and also to the opportunity now to create. So yes, I love the freedom, but I also love to just like work and get it done. So, so for me, you're excited about it either way. Yes. Like for me, I love to know there's a busy week ahead. And also I try to find that balance cause I have two beautiful children. Uh, but to try to find the balance as well, that's, I think the, the beauty of it, but, um, I think, again, because I started off having to create, it's never really been like, a, I'll do it when I want. It's like, I have to do it. <laughs> like, yeah. Rent is due. Yeah. You Did, basically uh, almost have uh, like a skill set and creativity locked inside your body. And if you don't get it out, then you're probably not going to be very happy. Yeah. I mean, I, I honestly, I, I would say that I would still be doing this, what I'm doing now, even if I was just in my one car garage when I started. Mm. Actually, I didn't have a garage. When I upgraded to a one-car garage. <laughs> when you're using somebody else's garage that you shouldn't <laughs> exactly. have been using. <laughs> uh, I, I would still be doing it. Like That's how much I love it. Uh, you know, when, I'm, when I get extra time, I'm still in my studio creating. So, What you got, Andrew? No, I was just saying, did you ever go back and thank your boss for firing you? Uh, I, let's do it right now. Uh, yeah. I forgot I mean, her name, but thank you so much for firing me. Samantha. Yeah. Let's call her Samantha. No, I just think that's, Sam. That's yeah. pretty yeah, awesome thanks, of Sam. her to like look down like, you should go do that. Yeah. Like, quit you lying know, to people about them being in debt being a okay thing. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, I think as an artist, and I don't know if you can relate to this, but like when you're constantly living and thriving off of inspiration, where everything you do is led by the, some life events or something you read or something you heard, so you're constantly hungry for what's the next thing that's going to be fed to me. And so something like that, I saw that as a source of inspiration. I'm like, all right, I'm going to do that. Just like uh, I saw... Yeah, almost like you're so blinded by it, you didn't even see the downside that you just lost your job. Yeah, I was like... You're like, oh, that's cool. I should, I should do <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. I, and, and yeah, I should also get another job, which I, you know, I wish I did. But uh, I just, you know, I believed enough. But I mean, do you feel the same way? Do you feel like you're... Do you thrive off of inspiration yourself? Uh, every day, you? man. Every day. I need to, I, you know, need to pull it from all different kinds of places. I feel for me, I feel that uh, knowledge is a key. You know, and for me in school, I struggled with school. And so school wasn't a great place for me to learn. And so I'm doing all my learning now. You yeah. know, and it's really kind of weird because I like, I would have never thought that for myself, but I take myself to school almost every day by yeah. learning something on YouTube or through a, a audio book or, or something. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm in search of it all the time. And um, Wait, Did you do well in, in high school or did you go to college? Uh, I tried to go to college. It didn't work so well. Uh, I didn't, never did very, very good in school. No. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, likewise. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I always had a, I always had a heart. It just like, didn't seem like it was for me, yeah. you know? Um, and luckily I had parents that, uh, were understanding and they were like, Hey, look, you know, school is the same for everybody. Like, yeah. you know, they wanted me to work hard. They're like, don't, don't get a zero, you know, like yeah. do your homework and do your work and, you know, show up to class and don't skip and things like that. But all the, all the little basics that you that you find out later on are really the actual key 
to yeah. life. Like, uh, show up, don't be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that should actually be yeah. in front of show up. Yeah, so. work, work hard, right? I mean, it's like there's really, really simple things mm -hmm. uh, that can take you a long way. But when it comes to something like art, you, you can't really just get away with just that because there definitely is a skill set associated with it. I heard um, Gary V talk about something recently, and mm -hmm. he said that he, if he played Roger Federer with a 1984 uh, or if Roger Federer played against him with a 1984 John John McEnroe racket uh -huh. in tennis, that he would still get his ass kicked because the oh, skill sure. set is there. How early was this skill set uh, part of your life? Uh, as early as I can remember. Uh, I mean, I remember. Uh, it's like a it's like a superpower. I feel like it's <laughs> it's just it was always there. You know, I I can't ever think about the time I didn't identify myself as an artist or creator, That's cool. even when I tried different things. So in third grade, I started playing the trumpet and I played the trumpet from third grade to high school. Don't ask me to play it. I can it's play the been a flute. while. <laughs> I tried actually the, the last the skin year, flute. The skin oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they didn't Majored teach me in, in it school. for many years. That wasn't an option for me. School, <laughs> um, school of hard knocks. Right? Yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> uh, and then I, I got into dance in high school, but just paint, Drawing, creating was always, you know, a thing that was there. I can never remember it not being there. So, yeah, it is kind of like a superpower, I guess. Yeah, and, you know, in some way, right? What about um, when did you recognize that when, you know, when the class was asked to do something uh, that was uh, in your category, you know, painting uh -huh. or picture, like when, when was the realization of like, holy shit, David? Like, yeah. <laughs> Yours is amazing. Like, when was there kind of that realization? I remember uh, I was in third grade, and uh, actually, I didn't have to be asked. I think that was what where I saw the value and the creativity was uh, I would go, whatever subject we were working on, I would go get an encyclopedia. Kids, those are big books that we used <laughs> to have in classrooms. You call it Google now. We had these encyclopedias. I would go and grab one based on, say, we were learning about a certain animal, and I would find that animal in the encyclopedia and I would draw the skeleton of it the best that I could in third grade. Right. And then I would just turn it in like, you're welcome. <laughs> like I would just give the teacher, she's like, what am I supposed to do with this? But she would give me like two or three extra credit points. Like I needed it to graduate third grade or something. But um, <laughs> she, you know, and I, and I saw this, this exchange in value and creativity for something in return. And I didn't have to be asked to do it. So I just kept doing that. I'm like, oh, cool. I'm just going to turn in skeletons for, you know, the rest of my third and fourth grade years. <laughs> I'll still do that. I'll draw your skeleton next. There we go. Yeah. You don't right. have to ask me to do that. <laughs> so just early, you know, very, very early age, you uh, were kind of recognized for that in particular. Yeah. I think. And then, and then you, I, I think I probably just fed off of that. I'm like, oh, I just want to keep. Yeah. That's what happens. Somebody tells you to do a good job at something. At makes yeah. you feel good. You, uh, and you try, enjoy it too. Yeah, and you try to do other things, mm -hmm. and you get some resistance. So, did you play sports and things like that oh, too? Oh yeah, I tried. That's yeah, the keyword tried. <laughs> right. I, so I was, I was. But I think all these kid. things are important. They really shape who you are. Like oh, yeah. the things that you're good at and the things that you have some uh, real resistance at. It, it's really important because it also shows how bad do you really want to do it, <laughs> or how bad you are at sports. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How bad you are compared to everybody else. I think it's actually kind of a healthy thing. Yeah. Sometimes it's important to really, like, I, I have a real heart. I can't draw or paint. It's, well, we don't uh, know. I haven't seen, so. Yeah, it's really. <laughs> I mean, you got to, we, we can do an art battle. <laughs> Basically, I'm, I'm just trying to undersell it. I'm very talented. I, I, got some, <laughs> I got some skills over here that would blow your mind. He doesn't uh, want to show you up. You, He's know, like, you would literally would say, how the fuck did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> how the fuck is that a deer? I don't understand. Show oh, me how that's man. a deer. <laughs> uh, how did you get? into this in the first place, especially like, you know, more, uh, you know, more modern day of, of you dancing and having music and, and going all in the way you're doing now? Uh, you know, so there was a, a time in 2003, the first, I started in March of 2003. And because I had to make money, I just would go paint live at uh, jazz clubs and nightclubs. I would just show up, I talked to the DJs and then I befriend DJs and they're like, hey, why don't you come with me to all these spots? Well, I met this gentleman who's still a good friend of mine. He's got Kevin Costa. He's like, hey, man, I know you're doing this live painting, but have you ever heard of a guy named Denny Dent? I was like, nope. He's like, he's like a rock and roll painter. He's like on stage. He's like the show. He's sweating and like just throwing paint. I'm like, that sounds ridiculous. Actually, <laughs> that sounds so dumb. 
uh, why are you talking to me about this? He's like, well, if you need help with your website, just let me know. So I, he, I went to his place. He was helping me with this website. And then I saw this Denny Dent painting. And I said, you know, how did he do this? How did he create it? He's like, he's that guy, that crazy guy. It's on stage, throwing paint around. I honestly, I saw that and I realized it was a collision of all my passions. It was music, it was art, it was dance. Mm. And uh, I, you know, I had a moment like, that's what I want to do. This is, I was in this moment of also searching. You know, I, I, I was just so open to inspiration at the time. I think, I mean, even still, but so much so at that time. I saw that and I was living with my dad at the time. The next day, I just went in the garage and put some black paper up and some house paint that was laying around. And I just tried it. Mm. And, you know, it's 2003, so YouTube wasn't popping. You know, it was really hard to find stuff on Google at the time. And yeah. so, or it, it, at all. There he is. And uh, yeah, so this is Denny Dent. And, you know, I, I just went in the garage and just tried it. I, I had no <clears throat> idea his, now I know techniques. Yeah. Now I can watch this. I'm like, ah, I know what he's doing because I've gone through it. But yeah, that's a cool technique that he has. It looks like he's almost scratching off the black yeah. surface of the paint, of the, uh, canvas there and, this and is so creating an image raw. honestly it, it's it, i get chills watching this because he was so ahead of his time and he he didn't have a, like an inspiration you know he just was like mm -hmm. i'm gonna do some crazy shit and this is what he came up with and now you know there was uh he had one student brian olson who i've uh gotten to know over the years i've also gotten to know uh denny didn't pass away in 2005 but i got mm -hmm. to know his uh wife and uh and is i've met these people is this called something does it have like a name I mean, or just it, painting. <laughs> I, I call it performance painting. Oh, okay. You know, I, he called it rock and roll painting. I felt like it could be more than that. Expanded. Yeah. Um, people call it different things. I just kind of like ran with performance painting because, for example, this he could just be on the side of a show painting live. You know, standing right. there. But this is a show. I mean, this probably isn't the best example, but he's really engaging with the audience and he's going to the microphone. He's like screaming at them, and so to me, I'm like that's a performance so just add that to painting and um you know that's what it's i feel like it's become when you uh first started to see this stuff um obviously the art is building confidence in you from you were good at it from the time you were a kid mm -hmm. uh, but getting on stage and dancing and throwing around paint is a whole nother thing was were you apprehensive about it or just so excited about it you didn't really worry about it that much i was i was super excited so i, I think that's where you know i think about uh kind of the bigger picture where I feel like my life was leading up to this, the things that I got into. I got into dance at a very specific time in high school that really led me up to, I would say from 2000 to 2004-ish. I, I was into dance maybe a little before 2000. But getting comfortable to be on stage, which I had never done before. Can you and floss? So, can I, can I, can you? Hell no, I can't floss. I try. I can only kind of like floss to one side. It doesn't really work so well. <laughs> that's and then my kids get really embarrassed. I could, and, I could dabble. And switching to the other side's hard. I can't figure Is it out. That, that's like the whole thing. You have to switch from. That's yeah, the oh, he's whole got point. it. Look, he's, he's doing it. There you go. I'm also God, counting dude. like in my head. One, like, <laughs> and I just messed up. Yeah. yeah. When did you. Jessica can't floss, I don't think. Right? Or can you? Have you broke through? <laughs> <laughs> dude. <laughs> You should have floss battles. I know. At lunch. Mm. I know. I think we'll all fail. Yeah. So like <laughs> Danny right there, he's painting with both hands. Yes. When did you learn that you can do that? Uh, immediately. I mean, I, I saw this. I was like, all right, if he's using both hands, I need to learn how to do this in both hands. And again, over the years, I realize why now. Uh, it's sort of like engaging your whole body mm. and you're painting with your body rather than being right-handed or left-handed. It's on, you like, yeah, I think a right hand and left handed thing is, is a very limiting thing because you just yeah. think, oh, I'm right handed. I can't, my left doesn't do shit. Yeah, you have all these other parts of your body yeah. that you can use. <laughs> right. And when you play, uh, when you play like baseball, uh -huh. you know, you, you catch with your left hand. So there's definitely, yeah. definitely plenty of coordination there and plenty of strength to do a lot of other things. Yeah. But it must take uh, it must take some time to get that left hand uh, working well, huh? Yeah. I mean, you know, I didn't realize that. I didn't know I could do that. I just tried it. And then I realized that there were some techniques that I could apply that it wasn't, again, it wasn't Maybe about just drawing with my left hand. It was right. positioning my body a certain way, right. which again, dance played a role into that as well. So uh, the other thing that with dance too is uh, being able to do something over and over again, like when you're learning a dance routine and you fail. And you're like, all right, this sucks or I'm not really good at this. But I know if I keep doing it over again and learning along the way, I'm going to get better. So when I would practice these paintings early on, I would do a painting for 
50 plus times over and over again until I got it down. So I had this foundation of just like practice, like work until I even performed or painted in front of people. <clears throat> when it comes to uh, music, when it comes to art, you know, some of the greatest things, some of the greatest Painting some of the greatest songs have been under the influence. Is there any performance enhancing <laughs> drugs involved in performance art? I mean, define under the influence. <laughs> no. I don't know, like you have a shot or something, or even just you know, I would say this before marijuana or something like that. I before most shows, I have like a glass of wine, mm, loosen just up a, little a little something, bit. little something. You know, if it's a show like after noon, I'll usually do that. Yeah. It's a morning show; they're getting like a <laughs> coffee infused day. That's here, right. Probably. But uh, no, I mean, I, I like a little, I like a little wine. Loosen what was up. it like uh, doing this uh, at the NBA Finals? Um, that was wild. So we did it. I think we've done it three times now. Uh, the first time was with the Spurs when they were mm. they they were in it. That was however long that ago that was. Um, man, you know what? I I started painting live at the Fox and Goose in okay. downtown yeah so that's the stuff that i think about when i have these moments and there's been other really awesome moments but i think about yeah this is it right here how do you deal with the nerves you turn them into energy turn them into positive energy uh yes or, or, no. or have you always you know kind what? of thrived in this spot, i, I honestly i just start working i think i use i like right now i if you're watching i this, understand so this would be like us lifting in front of a crowd like yeah. since, since we're comfortable lifting it wouldn't really be a big it wouldn't be that big of a deal we're, we're used to it and you know how to work through it it's almost yeah. like uh any time that you've felt uncomfortable and, you're, and you get so comfortable with that over time you're like all right i know i'm a little nervous but i've worked through this before and so the more you train that muscle of uh you know overcoming fear right. or overcoming being nervous you become comfortable with that. And then as time goes on, like, oh yeah, I know how to do this. This is my home. So mm. one thing you'll see on my videos, you'll see the carpet, you'll see the paint, you'll see the drop cloths, and that's always there in some form. So whether it's small, whether it's big, whether it's a huge production around. So I always look at it like no matter what's around oh, me, see. we could be in a stadium of 75,000 people, or we could be in this arena, or even a, a venue of 500 people. That's my home. Like this little area, this is where I feel comfortable and it's got all my paints and I, I feel like that kid again, you know? Yeah. There's, um, a perfect analogy is, is a sport of like basketball, you know, where the, some of the best free throw shooters in the world, they, they'll dribble the ball a couple times. They have a routine, you know, wipe the sweat off, but they, they have a very specific way that they're doing everything before they do that yes. shot. They dribble the ball twice or three times or however many times they spin it. Mm -hmm. They kind of feel the weight of it and then they shoot it. Yeah. And many of them have been asked, the best free throw shooters in, in the history of the NBA have been asked, like, why they do all that. Mm -hmm. And it's, they said it's to feel the weight of the ball. Well, obviously they know the weight of the ball, but mm -hmm. they're trying to create a similar circumstance like what you're talking about where this is my environment. This is what I'm used to do, doing. It doesn't matter if there's some yeah. <laughs> maniac heckler in the crowd or if the crowd's <laughs> all for me. I'm going to dribble it three times. I'm going to spin it. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to shoot it. I'm going to make the shot. Yeah. I, I had a quick question. Do you guys get hecklers uh, at lifting at, events? At powerlifting <laughs> meets? Uh, that I would, would actually... not heckle the guy that's lifting yeah. a thousand pounds. <laughs> that, would be, that would be amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. I think we have more trouble with hecklers in the gym than we do uh, outside the <laughs> Before, gym. Before, yeah. Yeah, because we always uh, always are talking trash. Do you have um, people that you get together with and, and do some of this stuff with? The people come to your studio and, and you uh, got some... I have, you know, there's there's two guys. Uh, this guy, uh, Ricardo, R Ricky, you look him up, uh, Ricardo Arts on Instagram. He was a uh, probably one of my first students. Uh, he's an amazing dancer. Uh, he, da he danced in the Jabwalkies Vegas show for a long time. Uh, he's an amazing uh, break dancer. And I just thought, I had this, I don't like, I wonder if I could teach someone how to do what I do. Hmm. So he was actually my first student Came to town, I gave, I gave him a two-week course, crash course, in my studio. And by the end of that, uh, he was able to do his first performance portrait. Oh, cool. It, which is really cool. And then there, uh, another one of my... Uh, that must have been fun, to be able to build him up and... Oh, it's, it's amazing to see what he's doing now, too. I mean, he's, you know, it's a hustle. I taught him the art, but the hustle is a whole different thing. Yeah. And But the other one is uh, this guy, DK, who was my assistant for many years here in Sacramento... He worked for me for free for a few months, and then I, I needed an assistant, hired him. And I just said, I just, I'm not going to teach you. Just watch. Just watch what we do. Watch what I do if you really want to learn, and then go try it. And so it was like uh, maybe a year and a half ago, he started asking me all these questions. I'm like, dude, th this is your time to just go try it. You've seen me. You've 
travel with me. You've seen it all. Just go try it. So DK is another person. I wouldn't necessarily say we collaborate, but if they have questions or if they, you know, hey, how do you work through this mm. thing? It's such a small thing now. You know, it's, right. it's almost like being the beginning of, uh, I don't know, like a new technology in a sense, a new way of thinking. Are there people that come to you and want to do this almost like for the exercise? And are you kind of like uh, resistant to that or are you... Or are you down with that? Or? Uh, I don't. I don't know if I would say I'm resistant to There's it. There's like sip and paint. You know, like people will drink and paint. Yeah. Like I don't know if, if you this know, is it. I'm actually. I'm more apt to help someone if they've already tried. Okay. So what I won't do is, uh, and I get this all the time. Get messages on Instagram from kids from all over the world. I'd love to try what you're They're doing. Like, How do I start? And I'm like, <laughs> start. Yeah. I'm serious. I'm like, go get paint. Go get a wall. Go get paper. Just try it. And then you let me know what you're having trouble with, and we'll go from there. Yeah, actually, starting everybody makes a big, big thing about how hard it is to like start something. It's actually, it's always the easiest. Like any machine that you ever use in your life, it, it always ha has a start button, mm -hmm. and it's the simplest thing to do is to hit the start button, and that's yeah. all you have to do uh, with anything that you you want to you want to read more. Just start, like yeah. push the button, you know, yeah. and and uh, and and start putting in uh, some of the work. And, you know, I also realized, too, over time that, uh, you know, it's a, I, I know that's a really special thing to turn a few hundred dollars in materials in a few minutes. And then when these pieces are auctioned off or sold for tens of thousands of dollars, I'm like, this is a you, very unique gift and, and opportunity. So for me, I see the value in it. And that's why I, I protect it so much. And but also why I'm so open to share with other people. There's another guy, actually, Dave Sharp, who's in the U.K., He's a good friend of mine. He's a performance painter, amazing artist. He's, you know, been doing it for years. And when I was in London, we finally met up and, you know, we kind of talk about mm. things with clients, just like shop talk. And it's, you know, you pro can probably do this with people that come in the gym. I don't get that often. And so when I do meet up with them, I, I really geek out. There's another guy, uh, Vilas Nayak, based in India. He travels the world. He came to my studio and just, again, we just sat there for hours and just talked about how we work through certain things or use certain materials and paints. And uh, it's very it's very interesting to see where this is going to go. And honestly, I always say this. I was not the first. I will not be the last. Right. And if I'm going to live any significant life, I don't want to be the last. How do you know how to say no to some – you must get a lot of requests of people, uh, you know, want, wanting you to do images for them. Yeah. Um, it just got to feel right to you? Yeah. I mean, I, I want to be inspired. You know, it, honestly, it, it could be uh, – a portrait of a family and I'm like this is this feels cool this looks cool right. or it could be a portrait of family I'm just like not feeling it I mean uh it just depends it's on a case-by-case -case basis even with shows uh we get offers all the time very blessed to have that but there's a lot of shows that we turn down because I'm just not into the organization or I don't believe in what they do uh or we just don't have time right so it's one or the other. There's no, there's no formula. Well, people probably want to hire you for like parties and stuff like that too, right? Like probably all kinds of stuff. <laughs> is, this, right? is this your ask right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this your ask? Like, the hey, big ask. Gonna, like, all right, you're here. You got a party in ten minutes. You're on the podcast. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> this curtain opens up. There's a party back there. Mm -hmm. Let's go. And a, and a canvas. Yeah, the, or we could paint on this. We could paint your face <laughs> on there. Can uh, some of this be <laughs> uh, be built over time? You know, obviously, like uh, again, going back to the confidence thing. Yeah. Like you, you were able to have some confidence as a kid. Because you were good at it, and you rolled into it, but the hunger that you have now has probably increased a ton mm -hmm. from when you were younger. So, do you think people can kind of build build upon some of the things they have, some of the yeah. skills they have? Think about it like this: like you talk, I love the start button analogy. Wherever you press start, that's the beginning of your process of you building your confidence. I started very young, and I was always advanced very young. So I had I worked through a lot at a young age. I had an amazing animation teacher. And so the reason I was able to start my career at 20 was because I started so early on and worked through a lot. I was mentally working through a lot of things early on. So yes, wherever you start, it'll the time will be different for all of us, but anything can be built up over time. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think a lot of people don't, uh, don't always recognize that, that, that the skill set is one thing. And it's got to be worked on and refined. How did you, um, you know, you mentioned watching uh, that one guy, but how did you 
uh, refine this skill set? Was it really just a lot of trial and error? Oh man, if you pull up like, I mean, this this really <laughs> maybe isn't one of the best paintings, but uh, if you pull up really early paintings from between 2003 and let's just say 2008, like they were rough. But you know the <laughs> the the performance. I, I don't know if you ever do this, but I used to back in the day. Uh, go on the YouTube videos uh -oh. of me. I'm like, oh, let's go see. They're probably saying all these nice things about me, and they're not. They're like, you suck. <laughs> uh, you, you know, they. But also, I would read. Dude, it. what's up with those dance moves? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, they would say that. I'm like, damn, that's actually they're right. I was like, that's actually kind of weird. Or I would go to the microphone too much. And so, honestly, this is what's cool is when I started, I just went for it, and I was just learning in front of people. But then I would watch and I would address and I would listen to the criticism as something constructive mm. whether they meant it to be constructive or not i took it as all right i need to learn from this so it was just learning in front of people what's your uh, favorite kind of art what inspires you gets oh, you excited i love uh um stick figures are really just what you know i'm passionate about mm. no uh no i love impressionism impressionism to me is is wild so it, it, impression is the best way i could describe it is if you went up close to a painting it all looks like just colors kind of mumbled together and mixed up and looks like nothing and maybe when you step back five feet still doesn't but then you step back maybe 10 feet and it's so distinctive and clear it's like an organization of colors mm. that gives the illusion that there's an image there so and i feel i try to do that in my work i try trying more and more to have less def you know defined lines and more of like a distinct feel and that's why impressionism you know really sticks out to me um, when you're doing your your paintings, is that something that you're trying to create? Because you could probably do it faster. You could probably do it in some other way where it's revealed mm -hmm. what it is that you're doing earlier. Uh, are you trying to have it like be revealed a little later? Is there kind of a yeah. climax to the whole thing? That's always the goal. Yeah. You know, uh, there's times where I kind of give it away too soon, but uh, <laughs> you know, learning over time is that people will will stay and watch longer if they don't know what it is. So it actually, instead of giving it away early on, uh, in, in my eyes, I don't know if you've, if you've ever drawn someone or watched someone draw, first thing people ask is, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, you gotta wait and see. Yeah. And then they'll just kind of stick around like, I wanna watch this. We do these uh, Facebook Live sessions in my studio. They're like 40 minutes long. We do two paintings, like these intros, these like transitions. And then if we, when we look at the graphs, like more and more people start tuning in because of the painting process. They just wanna kind of stick around and see what it's gonna be. So now what I'm learning, especially as we we develop this production, we're going on tour, setting up a tour later this year. Awesome. I just put it out there right now, but um, more will be coming about that. But as we're developing that tour, and I think about the level of production and the experience, it's how can we make that process a mystery as long as possible uh, for the audience and their experience. What's the coolest thing that has come from you doing this kind of work? Um, Your coolest experience, whether you went to a different country or just met somebody you know what, cool or whatever. One of the coolest things was performing for uh, President Obama at the White House. That's a pretty big deal. It was insane. <laughs> and we got like a two weeks heads up. Uh, we got a call and they said, uh, the president's going to do this music festival. Were you just like, somebody fucking with me? What is this? <laughs> no, seriously. I was like, all right, mom, <laughs> did you call this in? Uh, the, no, he's like, they're doing a music festival called South by South Lawn. And your art fits perfect with the technology and the music and all this stuff. So, and I said, you have to pay your way. I'm like, I will pay whatever way I have to get there. And so we cleared the schedule. We got there. And I remember uh, we were just hanging on, on the South Lawn, just, you know, casually <laughs> on a Tuesday. And I remember uh, we had got done with sound check around 1030. And then this like super smooth, like guy just glided out of the back door of the White House. Just goes and just kind of walking around, like sits down on his bench. And then he sat next to this like massive Lego sculpture, <laughs> which you would never see on the South Lawn. And then I'm like, guys, that's him. <laughs> I'm like, who? Oh. I'm like, that's the guy. That's the president. And I'm like, why are we whispering? <laughs> so we just, I was like, let's just go say hi. Like, you know, he invited us. Like, <laughs> let's just go introduce ourselves. So I walked over to him. And this is before there was like some volunteers before. There was no one there before people realized that he was there. And then I went over. And I just said, hey, Mr. President, my name is Xavier Baldi. Thank you for having me. He's like, oh, thank you so much. And then, and then some people started coming over. We talked for like a minute. But then 
in like the smoothest, coolest way. He's like, hey guys, just no photos right now. I was like, cool, I'm gonna get some selfies. Well, my assistant that I brought out, DK, I'm like, your one job is to get photos. That's it, just take photos. So I meet him, we take selfies, he leaves, and I'm like, did you get the photo? He's like, oh, oh sorry, man. I'm like, well, you had one job. <laughs> So it wasn't until the next day I saw on uh, on the Today Show they were showing pictures of the event and the press corps had come out like right they were kind of it's kind of just chaotic at some point and someone grabbed a, got a photo of uh, me shaking his hand so I pretty much printed that in life size now it's above my bed no <laughs> your uh, your assistant is fired right <laughs> uh I was very close, <laughs> it's very uh, close. you know looking at uh, some of the uh, stats and information that we have. Uh, that we gathered uh you've raised over four million dollars for charity yeah that's awesome that's gotta Thank feel you. good that's i would say that's probably one of the what the coolest thing that we've been able to do over time uh when i was 25 i realized that you know this is a very unique opportunity and uh i set a goal at 25 to raise a million by 30 and that became this like filter for my decisions my life just everything and then working towards that goal. I'd never really set a goal doing what I do. It was kind of just guessing as I go. And then uh, when we met that goal, I'm like, what else can we do? So then we just kept going with that goal. Like, let's do another million and so on. And so I think 4.5 million later, it's awesome. A lot of we've been able to help a lot of people along the way in this journey. So what do you think the most misunderstood thing is about what you do? Um, that it's easy, you know. Uh, so people think maybe you just got a gift and like you just wake up, roll out of bed yeah. and go do it. You know, even when people say, uh, there's a comment that I read like, oh, he probably did this a thousand times. That's why you can do it. I'm like, yes, I did do it a thousand times. And if you did too, you'd be able to do this as well. And I commend that. And if you did, and if you could do it better than me, then I know the work it took to do it because there's no way around but practicing. And so I think the biggest misconception is, yeah, that I just grew up as an artist, comes natural, I just like throw it up there. <laughs> right. I could, but that's not why I'm doing this. I want it to be very specific. I like that sound effect. <laughs> it's used a lot. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know why. Yeah. <laughs> how do you know uh, like how much your paintings are going to go for? Like, How do you put a value number on that? I don't. Mm -hmm. I just, uh, it's just kind of like real estate. I'm like, what did someone buy it for last time? Mm -hmm. And then that's kind of the value. But, and then we average it out. So say if you were to buy a painting, I would say, cool, well, the average is this for this size. But they've gone for as high as 50000 and as, say, you know, as, as low as, you know, around 1000 when I when I started. Actually, lower than that when I started. But I got a friend that buys art, and uh, he said it's like real estate. Mm -hmm. You know, he said in most cases it's... It's uh, you know, going to hold its value really well, and a lot of times it's just going to go up. Yeah. I was like, I never knew that, never thought about it. Because yeah. you only think about like the, the really famous stuff, mm -hmm. right? And you don't think about any of, the other, any of the other paintings that other people are doing. But they do have a tremendous value, um, and then they have like a sentimental value. Yeah. Do you have some things that you've done that you, know, you, you're just, you hold on to because oh, yeah. they have that much value to you? Yeah. So actually, to go back to what you were just saying is – what the value of art i think you know i i don't mind negotiating with people you know it's just part of just business in general and living in a capitalist culture but you know when someone is is comparing something that's made by hand that that there's only one on one of one of one and then they compare it to the price of say a sneaker like mm -hmm. a, a limited edition sneaker that's manufactured by a machine or a company or some sort of marketing and so for me what's interesting is that people, as long as the artist is alive, they compare you to a machine mm. or a manufactured product. And, you know, over time, you just hope that you can kind of build the value based on, you know, the life that you lived or, you know, what your art went for. But... Sounds sounds really depressing, by the way. Well, like, no, no. <laughs> where somebody's like, you're worth this. Like, your work is worth that. Like, sometimes there's, I mean, obviously you've made it to a more comfortable spot. Yeah. But in the beginning, when somebody's like, I'll give you 50 bucks for it. You're yeah. like, oh, 50 bucks. Really? It, 50 bucks. It, it, does, it does hit you in the heart a little bit. You're like, I just yeah. slaved my whole life yeah. over this. But that's also part of becoming an artist. You want to be professional? This is the shit you have to deal with. So, and it's, and that's, I'm, I can take it. Like, for me, I'm, I'll take it all day. Like, I have parents who were entrepreneurs and, you know, my, I see my dad build it and lose it and build it again. And my mom as well. So for me, I'm like, that's just life, you know? 
have you ever gone to a show and, and sold art? Like a lot of people do that. I know there's like Western art and there's all different kinds of places where people go and sell their work. Uh, you, you mean, have I gone to show? Yeah. Uh, not really. You know, I, I've tried to do the gallery thing and it just doesn't translate as well. Right. They see something on a wall. They're like, how long was this made? In six minutes, and then you want yeah. me to pay X amount of money for it, but they didn't experience it, so they don't know the value of the experience. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking in my head watching your performance. It just wouldn't. Yeah. By wouldn't the way, I realized I didn't answer your question before. It's something that I hold on to. There's paintings early on oh, yeah. that I created uh, in the first handful of years. They're like really fine art pieces that uh, inspired by kind of like urban jazz. And I realized that that's what I was seeing because that was a, a time of my life. Like that, that is done. You know, it's kind of like how people are like, I love the old Kanye. That Kanye is done. <laughs> like, he, he's not the same person. Right. And I realized that those paintings at that time, that I'll never be the same person. I may do something similar, but there's going to be another influence of life on that or skill set. And so I would say even right now, right now, the paintings that I do right now will, will never look the same two, three years from now. Right. And it's debatable on whether they're better or worse or whatever, but yeah. th it'll never be the same. Correct. I think uh, when you look at like Sylvester Stallone writing Rocky, right? Yeah. He's never going to write another Rocky. No. Or uh, Eminem, you know, like a lot of these guys, they have like that one, it's not like they have one thing that's great, but they have that one thing that uh, was kind of their breakout thing that's very, very special yeah. to them and very special to their fans too. Yeah. yeah. What do people uh, know you the most for, you think? Uh, I know you've been on TV and there's like, you know, you've yeah. been doing these things at the basketball games and, you know, I would say, is there a particular painting? Wow, my underwear showing in that. <laughs> she pulled up my pants. Wow. Nice G-string. Wasn't that. not wow. expecting <laughs> that. Wow. It is quite comfortable. It's airy. Especially when you get them up what's, over the shoulders. So that's what I like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I should have wore that for wardrobe. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, this is our wardrobe for today. That's right. Just a sh you're like, that's just a string. <laughs> Yeah, like, shit, man. We paid you to come here. Yeah, this is what you're wearing. You're welcome. Uh, no, you know, I, I, th I think probably America's Got Talent would be the the broadest spectrum uh, that really put me on. Even though I was doing it professionally for eight years before, we had a lot of great success before that. Um, and then doing that when million, tens of millions of people see you at one time, they're like, "Oh, I remember you from America's Got Talent." So for me, I'm like, "That's that's cool" because I, I I enjoyed that process and. We made it to the finals, lost to the dogs. It's cool, but <laughs> um, but no. that's got to sting. That's got to stay with you. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing that stings. Forget the fifty dollars for you need my a painting. painting. You need a painting. The dogs beat me. <laughs> you need a painting of those dogs. Just like right when you walk in your oh, your place, your I studio. Know. It's gonna be fired up to go practice. Damn man. <laughs> Uh, guys, you can't see it, but on my, my, there's a tear rolling down my eye. He's, uh, <laughs> right side of my face. He's crying <laughs> profusely right now. So you mentioned having eight years of success uh, prior to that. One thing I think people get confused about a little bit is that um, there's, there's success in every single day. There's success at every corner and every turn of every single thing that you do. Everything that you do is an opportunity uh, for success, maybe not to be great, maybe not to be spectacular, mm -hmm. food choices, drink choices, choices with who you hang out with, mm -hmm. choices on what you read, choices on where you spend your time. Mm -hmm. There's these corners every single day where you can be, you have the option of being successful. It's a choice that you can make or not being successful. Eight years goes by and mm -hmm. you're plugging away and plugging away. Some good, some bad, some good, some bad. Uh, a week of just shit just being bad yeah. in your in your life and in your career. Mm -hmm. A week turns around and starts to get a little, all these things, all these ups, these downs, a lot of downs, a lot of downs, a couple ups here and there. Yeah. Get a crumb thrown your way here and there. And then eight years later, you're on, well, probably even longer than that, but basically eight years later, you're on yeah. America's Got Talent. And now all of a sudden you are recognized that's all that happened. You're not any more successful. You didn't do anything different. Yeah. You didn't do one thing special. Yeah. Except for have all these opportunities each and every day that you had. You tried to be as successful as you could possibly be with those choices. Mm -hmm. And you were, and then you got recognized for it eight years later. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, that's one of those things. It's like, motherfuckers, I've been here the whole time, <laughs> you know, it's, I love you on America's Eight Got years Talent. years for an overnight success. Yeah, I love you on America's Got Talent. Yeah. And it's, it was a, 
I'm sure it was a, a, a building phase of you uh, learning what to do, what not to do, yeah. how to do it in so many different respects. Yeah. Uh, you know, I would say what was significant about America's Got Talent is this is why I said, fuck what I've done for the past eight years. I, I used to do paintings in six minutes. I had to do them in 90 seconds, each one. Dogs get it, comedians get it, musicians get it. That was my next challenge. Mm. I, I was hungry to figure this out. And it hurt. Like the process of saying yes and then failing and not figuring it out until two weeks before the audition. <laughs> and then going and not knowing that it was all going to come together. Like that's the shit I live for. So I don't care. That's why I say like I don't care what people recognize me for. Wherever you recognize me for at that moment, I know I work my ass off for it. And it's a blessing to be doing it. So right. uh and whatever that next thing is, you know, if it's something that I have to work my ass off for, then uh, I'll do it. Like, so this, this is so funny. So the, uh, we had this whole idea, like, all right, let's do like uh, music through time. Like the first one would be Beethoven. If we get through, we'll do, we did Elvis, Mick Jagger. And then, uh, but, but even like the paintings that we, I wanted to progress through this process. So everything was done in 90 seconds. Even the semifinals, I did this 16 foot tall Statue of Liberty. And so to do something like that, like, we, you know, I had to step out of just being an artist at that point now, which I had to be a leader to my dancers, to my team, to the people that were helping us out, like really cast a vision. I never really stepped into that role before. And I, so I feel like there was so much more than just the recognition that came out of it, but who I had to become as a person mm. uh, through, you know, learning and putting myself a in A lot of position. pressure. Oh yeah, yeah. Because you know you don't know what's gonna happen. Hey, you're up next. Oh no, wait, hold on. Some something something else happened, right? Oh, wait, commercial break. Oh no, you're on, right? They oh do yeah. Do a lot of all oh, that shit, right? Uh, there's I could spend a whole another two <laughs> hours talking about that, but yeah, it's it's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff to deal with that has nothing to do with art or creativity. Um, you know, you're up there in front of uh, you know Howard Stern and Howie Mandel, and <clears throat> they don't know. And, and the no. people, the people that run the show, they don't know or care. They're, that's it's ninety seconds. You got yeah. ninety seconds. They don't care that you had to. You know, they don't care how you figured it out. Mm -hmm. You had to figure it out, right? Yeah. And I think that's important for people to understand that people don't care how you come to your conclusion. They just want you to get there. Yeah. They want like even uh, even work wise, if you're just you know somebody asks you to do something, they don't always really care about how you got there, how you didn't get there. Yeah. Um, you may have to say, hey, like, you know, I, I was sick or something. There's things that happen, right? But in general, it's like you just want the guy to get there. Just figure out a way to get there. Find how, a way. How would you compare that to lifting? Say, for example, you know, you've got this, you know, I don't know the right terms, but this massive deadlift that you have to do. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking about all the things that you should have done leading up to that point? Or oh, like, oh, I should have added more weight on that day. Or are you just like, look, I'm just going to go for it. How does that work in that world of powerlifting where – you got to come to that conclusion and get it done. It really, it really comes down to how bad do you really want it? Like how bad. And, and that's not to say like, if you want it more, you're going to make it. Cause that's mm -hmm. not realistic. Yeah. You know, 400 pounds, 400 pounds or 800 pounds or whatever the weight we're talking about. It's heavy. And, and it probably hurts. But back to what we said earlier about have it does hurt. <laughs> yeah. It's very fucking painful sometimes. But back to what we said earlier about, Everything that you do in the course of a day has an opportunity to be heading towards success or at least heading towards your goal. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing too many things that aren't heading towards your goal, if you're doing too many things that aren't, quote unquote, making you money, then you're losing out. Mm -hmm. And when you go to rely on that reserve of strength, it won't be there because maybe you went to do this lift on a Saturday and on Friday, you were like, oh, I'm going to you know, make sure I eat really good on Friday. I'm going to eat a lot. I'm going to get a lot of rest. Mm -hmm. but it doesn't work that way. What, yeah. about, what about the week before? What about the weeks before? What about the months before? You know, how, how, how deep down this rabbit hole does somebody really want to go? Yeah. Do you want to be good at it? Because it's pretty easy to be good at it. Or do you want to be great at it? Do you want to have... And the only way we can be great at anything, in my opinion, is have progress. Mm -hmm. You uh, mentioned half gift, half half uh, you know half talent, half you working your ass off, right? Yeah. And if you never really tried to manifest, you never really tried to manage what you had, because that's really the key. You made a choice to be an artist, but that doesn't do anything. 
Yeah. It doesn't do, it doesn't do anything for you. You got to, yeah. ma- you got to manage it and try to turn it into something, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can sign up to compete, you can <laughs> sign up to, to, but you have to do the work. And I, I love that point you made, which is, you know, it's not just like the week before that you, you do this. I mean, when I think about in high school, I was, I would go to the mall and I would take a sketchbook and I would draw people in, in motion and movement. And my, my teacher at the time, uh, Mr. Sullivan, you know, he, he's like, go watch people, go be an observant person because that's going to benefit you later on. And now being observant, if I were to draw you, watching how you shift Hopefully your weight. make my arms a little bigger. Chest <laughs> how beautiful the space is, you know, be, be observant. And, and those, even those little things, these techniques that you've got to just enact or learn over time so that in the moment when you've got to do a 90 second painting, okay, I'm observant even in that moment of to fix something or to adjust or to, uh, to uh, continue. You know, uh, back to the, the workout analogy that we're talking about. A lot of times people are like, oh, you know, I didn't have my pre-workout or they <laughs> rely so much. Wait, did you hear my, that was my excuse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They rely so much on these uh, pre-workout things, but I don't think you know, nothing, nothing will ever matter. And people talk about performance enhancing drugs yeah. and steroids and, and these things, they have a profound effect on, mm-hmm. uh, the muscle mass that you carry around, the body fat percentage that you have. Of course they, they, and your mental state. They're, they're, yeah, they're, they're a big deal. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to ever undersell it. They're not a big deal, but nothing will ever, ever come close. Not even, it just won't even match up at all. Shouldn't even be mentioned in the same breath as making the right choices yeah. over and over again. Yeah. Over and over, day in, day out. I mean, we see it in powerlifting all the time now where there's uh, a lot of guys that are drug tested mm-hmm. and they're breaking all-time world records that are held by guys that aren't tested. Yeah. And so we, we see it and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's just to that same point, but a pre-workout is just a drink. Mm-hmm. Your pre-workout doesn't, it's not a cup. It's not a shaker cup. It's not a product. Your pre-workout yeah. is, your pre-workout should start the second that your last workout ended. Mm -hmm. So if you have a shitty bench day, like we bench here on Thursday at Super Training Gym, if you fall short- I'm glad it's not bench day. (laughs) (laughs) Every day is bench day according to Smokey. After this, we're going to go lift. That's right. (laughs) That's right. But after after you failed or after you didn't complete what you wanted to complete, that's where the pre-workout should be starting. What do I got to do different? That's when you get with everybody else and you say- Hey man, like guys, you know, I want to be better at this. Like, what, what did I do? And like, mm-hmm. Oh dude, you, you've been slacking off. You haven't been here. You haven't, you know, they're going to point out everything Yeah. and then some, and maybe even make up stuff and insult you, uh, unjustifiably probably. <laughs> do you want to keep talking about you know, until you, <laughs> you yeah. let it out, let it out. Ah! Work. <laughs> but that's, yeah. uh, you know, that's a lot of people think it's just the prep mm-hmm. right before, you know, 30 minutes before, but you're not going to get that from. Yeah. Now, I, I would say even that, even if you did, so for what I do, uh, there's a, so when I did the NCAA men's championship halftime, so the final four is the final game, and because of my schedule, I didn't have a lot of time to rehearse. Mm. So I showed up day before my dancers, I was in my hotel room, I cut up these little pieces of paper, and I'm like, all right, so the music's going to start, you guys are going to move around like this. And they're just looking at me like, well, you want us to do what tomorrow? So I was like, no, just trust me, like trust the process. So the next day, you're we, this little piece of paper right here, and you're going to be going over there. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to crush it. What is it? Uh, Meet the Millers when he does that little. Did you ever see Meet the Millers? No, no. Oh damn. Which one was that? Anyway, huh? Can you oh, we up? are the Millers. We are the Millers. I can pull it up. It's uh, <laughs> he's like drawn out a scenario to uh-huh. this uh, to this to this kid that's on the bus with him, and they're trying to get like a they're trying to get out of a ticket from a cop, mm-hmm. and so the guy is like, okay, he goes, we're here, and he and he writes in the dirt yeah he's like we're here and he draws like an x uh-huh. and he goes the cop is over here and he's like there's a bush right there he goes you're gonna swing around here and you're gonna give him blow job, blow job. <laughs> and he tries to slip it in there real quick and he's like wait what he goes ah, wait what? he's like yeah here it is there it is <laughs> he's like I'm, he goes i'm, I'm, I'm oh, yeah he's got the bottle yes. cap the rock <laughs> yeah god damn this is a good movie that's so funny oh that's funny <laughs> holy shit jennifer <laughs> aniston so hot too what are oh, we gonna do about family that? values right there i love that oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to hijack everything. No, it's geez. okay. That's a great. God damn. This has Look a lot that. to do this... with you. <laughs> lot to do with how you uh, do your images, right? Well, no, no. So, <laughs> so I, I basically was was in that position. I'm like, all right. I just look crazy. The next day, though, we showed up in the morning and we rehearsed. I'd never done the paintings before. Mm. And uh, 
but I needed to make sure that my dancers, because I know I can click into into that mode. Any, I just I need a certain prep time study, and for them, I want to make sure that they were comfortable with the movements. So the first time I painted it was in front of seventy five thousand people. <laughs> oh, this is uh, I think for USC. I'm not sure if there's video up of um. They, what was I wearing? What? The <laughs> hell? Oh my god! Hey, you got to stand out. Someone right? stop me next time. Mark, yeah, you see me in some weird dude. What's this leather getup you got going on? <laughs> Just came from the biker bar. That's one of those things show. that you only wear once. You know, it's like four hundred and eighty-five well, bucks, and you and I'm thought it was cool at the and time. I'm sweating and... under that, like it's all oh, just soaked full of sweat. You're probably dying, but you can't take it off at this point because you're well, sweating too bad. I mean, I could. It's a different type of show. <laughs> so. a... They did not pay me for that. Yeah, people got to pay. A I will owe them that. money. Yeah, but uh, anyways, yeah. So we did the show. It actually came out amazing, and but I would say it only it, you know there are moments where you can tap into your experience and trust the process. But even that was because of years of uh, studying, showing up, practicing, right, right. and that's why we were able to pull that off in that yeah. moment. Yeah, um, years of being. Thank you for turning that off, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> years of being uh, prepped beforehand. What's the what's your favorite piece that you've ever done? Um, man, there's so many. Can I give you two? Sure. All right. Uh, the first one, I would say there's a, a painting called DJ Jewel. That was one of those fine art pieces, the ones that I, I just I hold on to. It was my first uh, published poster. Uh, it was just so representative of a certain time in my life. So that was one. You can Google that, DJ Jewel, Dave Yerbelli. And then I would say the next one would be uh, Einstein. And I, I think everywhere I do that one, it's just so universally connected i mean everyone sort of can connect to that and my goal of the performance is to use it as a platform as a conduit to either inspire people or to to give as we go mm. so einstein has become a great conduit uh for either giving or inspiration what is it about him is it the hair is that like a big part of it uh he's ugly like on <laughs> no lie no he is an he's ugly he's got some deep person, features but that's what i love about him is the the one thing I, I hate the most actually is painting really beautiful, pretty people. Uh, I would not be a subject. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never paint you. <laughs> no, and I and not, not and I say that because there's no shadows. There's no so features. many girls listening to this right now being like, he painted me. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Put me on blast. I know. No, and I, and I only say that because usually. You know, conventionally beautiful people, they try to minimize shadows mm. and selfie loomy lights. I like the shadows. Like I like the the creases. <clears throat> I like the I like the wild hair. I like the hair up in a ponytail or like just the 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 laugh lines. Like to me, that is that's great character. That's where we're unique. Is when we're where do you ugly. paint these people <laughs> off of usually? Like uh is it just images that you see in magazines or is there some because you're adding your own twist to it yes. too, obviously. So I used to go before really I could like find a lot of stuff online. I used to go to libraries. I used to go to uh, Barnes and Noble and I get these like books on rock and roll mm. or uh, like photography books on celebrities. And I would go and I would scan them and I would put them in Photoshop and break them down. Uh, now I just I go on Google and you know. I, I yeah, look you can up see a images. lot. Yeah, and I've and I've actually developed a library of literally thousands of images uh, that I reference for various reasons, various things. I just it helps me keep a library up here because I I can't always refer to it. So then what I do is I just kind of go to my library. Yeah, you've done a lot, at this and point. I look at it I'm like, oh yeah, it's that one, and there's this technique that I do there. So uh, yeah, I have a really weird, crazy process, but I just to find the images now, I just kind of go on Google. And then I just like chop it up, chop it down. It's like sampling a right. song, you know. What are some that you haven't done yet that like, uh, like I don't know, Bruce Lee or Muhammad Ali or if there's, is there anybody like that you uh, kind of, it's been on your list, but you just have never gotten around to it yet? Uh, Justin man, Bieber. Been, I've done that. I've, <laughs> I've done a lot. I've done all those ones that you said. Uh, you know what? I, I haven't really done, I mean, I've done like illustrations of my kids, hmm. But I haven't done like a performance painting of my kids. No, that'd so, be cool. And and part of it is like I they don't know this. I'm constantly looking at them and staring at them. They're like, Dad, why are you staring at me? And I'm like breaking down their <laughs> their face and shadows and highlights. And I'm like, how would I recreate this beauty? You know? Right. And to me, that's intimidating. It'd be hard because you see them so much. It's 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 it'll probably be 
when I do it, and I, that's why I collect so You'd many photos. You'd be all crying again. the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's wrong with him? Seriously, yeah. I, but that to me, I haven't done my kids. Uh, actually, like a performance painting of them. Uh, they probably just think it's weird anyways. So that's probably why I haven't done it. But uh, as for like celebrities or icons, uh, man, there's so You mentioned many. earlier your parents being uh, entrepreneurs. Or at mm-hmm. least you said your dad was, I think. Yes, both, yeah. Both. Um, did they help foster some of this creativity? Did they? I, I'm throwing paint against the wall, and he literally was like, this is your life dripping down the wall, David. <laughs> like he was, he was very legitimately concerned. Yeah. Uh, and I don't blame him. I also was into graffiti early on and I was like a lot of nights running from the police and my, my mom knew about this. <laughs> so they were trying to like be constructive and say, why don't you paint in your room or in the backyard? And so even though. No, that's a good move. Yeah. They were always, they had yeah. a, they had a solution. Yeah. There, there was always, there was never a, you're grounded, whatever. It was, Hey, let me find a better way for you to do this. So because my parents are so resourceful and, and creative themselves, uh, they were just so encouraging and maybe to a fault. I could have used a little bit more discipline. Mm. Um, I, you know, I love my parents, but they, they know this Yeah, is my parents the same way. I could have been, you know, honestly, I didn't do well in high school. I think part of it was I wasn't disciplined to get my homework done. Right. Um, it's part of my story now, but there's, uh, I would say that the encouragement, there was no shortage of the encouragement with my parents. Yeah. And again, my parents didn't show, they didn't teach me, they showed me. I literally I watched my dad like just, you know, start this business and and run it for many years. It was successful days. It was really hard weeks and just seeing go through it. And I don't know why I'm like I want to do that. <laughs> I don't know why. So yeah, you're like he he's uh getting tortured by it, and you're yeah. you're thinking it's great. <clears throat> yeah. Are you able to do all different kinds of art? Uh, uh, like first, what? I mean, first of all, are you are you into like something like photography, which is totally oh, yeah. unrelated to. Yeah. But still related because you're taking, uh, you know, a, a history of images and mm-hmm. um, and then what about like um, just being able to uh, do more traditional stuff like where you uh, uh, my my uh, mother in law, she does uh, Western art. Mm-hmm. And so she'll take a photo and yeah. then her 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 art looks a lot like the uh, photo that she did. Yes. Like that kind of stuff. Yes. So actually uh, both. One, I'm really into video. And photography. A lot of my videos, uh, the recent ones have been done by a friend of mine, Chad Ross, but there's a lot of videos in there that I edit myself. I'll kind of direct oh, the person to like shoot them. An editor. We need an editor. <laughs> do, you, do you do it? Hired. No. Oh, that's it. I'm, I'm, yeah, we need another <laughs> guy. I only work uh, two, Saturday evenings uh, once every other month. Is that cool? <laughs> <laughs> and only one Saturday per month. Is that is that, that for you? That's going to be perfect. I'm in. That's going to be perfect. That's going to be perfect. Sign me up. Uh, <laughs> No, I, I love photographer video. I wanted to be in animation. That's in my, in high school. I took animation. I wanted to be this like you know work for Disney or be an animator. Mm. So I love film, photography, video. You still have a desire to do some of that? I do. I do. I have I have a dream, which I hope comes life. Are you guys, you're familiar with Fantasia? Uh, I am. Fantasia is like such a big inspiration yeah. on my just career, which is music and color. And my dream is to create or creative direct or work on a, I would say a future Fantasia film mm. or one like it. There was one maybe ra- even like a video game or something too. Uh, yeah. I mean, even that. There's definitely there's a lot of creative things that I, I outside of painting that I yeah. love. That I, I I just you know even interior design. I love uh, I love like picking out furniture and right. like textures and colors. So That's stuff that I just don't have any clue on how any of it works. <laughs> you know, I'm just like have you I tried. Don't... Uh, I yeah, I've failed miserably. And my <laughs> wife asked me all the time. She's like, "What do you think about this over here versus?" This? I'm like, "I just I have no idea." You're like, "We need it. We need what is it? The uh, what I do guess... we throw out there? The machete? Oh yeah, wall? throwing throwing the axes yeah, the and axe. stuff. So we need an axe wall right there. Yeah, there you go. I um, I can visualize stuff okay, but certain things like that, uh, I need to kind of physically see it. Mm-hmm. Like in our gym now, I haven't uh. In the gym we had previously, over a period of time, I kind of put more and more stuff up on the wall, like a record board. And and this time around, I've been kind of careful with it because I'm like, I want it to kind of just piece together naturally. Like we just got uh, the MMA wall where we have the the punching bags and the okay. speed bags and, and, the, and the mats for jujitsu type stuff. And everything's just kind of piecing together now. And yeah. so as I kind of look at it, I can stand back and be like, oh, okay, well, that wall's bare and we can put this on it and yeah. that on it and that kind of I thing. would say, though, so I walked out there in the gym before you got here, 
it's very well organized. Like I look at it and I'm slightly jealous because my studio is crazy. Like yeah. it's organized to a point. I know where everything is. My assistant knows where everything is. Outside of that, it's just chaos. But I I I admire and I love <laughs> order. And yeah. it is so like clean out there. Yeah, well you, you probably need a lot of help because your mind is probably uh demented a little bit like <laughs> mine is. <laughs> where like everything's all over the place and these guys uh, do an amazing job because the idea is to have a place that's a little rough around the edges mm -hmm. uh, that's that's tough mm -hmm. uh, but it's not um, not so clean that it looks like a hospital you yeah know? but you also want to just pop in and be able to do what you do yeah like, you want to clean and organize the yeah. paint's always out like I I do love about my studios that everything's ready to go I like there's either a canvas up a blank one the paint is out on the ground and uh, there's always it's always ready. So yeah, it's very. I think as long as your space is ready to create or to to work out or lift, I think that's really what's more important. Right. Who in your mind, uh, other than your religious beliefs, is mm -hmm. the is the greatest creator of all time? Oh man. Whether you're looking at like a sculpture or yeah, a painting. I, I think or... uh, Leonardo da Vinci. You know, he was a master painter, a master. Inventor, uh, what do you say like his uh, IQ was just like off the charts. I mean, it, like they they say they 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 call him the smartest person ever walked the face of the earth. Some people, yeah. I mean, and and this is this is now pretty crazy. His his story recorded through history, like the Bible. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's been told and and documented over time. And so, to I think that's what's amazing about it. Also gives perspective to time as well. You know, we're so like in our heads, like right now, who's the smartest now? That's the smartest ever. No, no, no. There's people that were probably not recorded as much, but yeah, he true. was at least recorded and, and documented. And and he didn't have the technology or the tools to bring ideas to yeah, life. Yeah, like the dude that rubbed sticks together and made fire. Like, whoever that guy was, like he was, he, he had some pretty good ideas. Genius, <laughs> yeah. Give him a computer and see what he does. Yeah. Right. Burns it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I think you know, to me, Leonardo da Vinci is a is an example of just a brilliant mind, and he found outlets to get ideas out, and he was uh, you know special to this world. Favorite piece of art that's not yours? Ooh. Uh, or favorite pieces? There's a a, a Leroy Neiman painting. Uh, Leroy Neiman is one of my favorite artists. It's the the desktop picture on my computer. It's his painting of these elephants. And again, it's it's an impressionism. It's he's a colorist. It's mm. it's not defined, but it's so it is distinctive of these like family of elephants. So it's on my desktop. Inspires me every day. It's literally every color on the spectrum, but it's organized in a way to give you the illusion that there's. Is he still around? He's I'm pretty sure he passed away. Mm. Yeah, yeah, not not too long ago. <clears throat> Have you had a chance to meet some of these artists? That, you, um, that you've admired over the years? No, no. I mean, I, I haven't met uh, like Ernie Barnes is another. Artist, favorite artist of mine that was very influential early on. Uh, he passed away early on. Denny Dent passed away. Uh, yeah, Leroy Neiman. What you know, he was the last one that passed away that I was really inspired by. Mm. Um, yeah, there was another artist, uh, Justin Bua, who I greatly admire. He's an amazing uh, urban artist. Uh, he was very influential on my early work. Um, we haven't met. We've spoken. Uh, we've kind of had a love hate relationship with each other um but it's always healthy <laughs> but uh but no he's still but that doesn't change anything the fact that he's a brilliant artist right so yeah um have you ever seen a movie called exit through the gift shop oh yeah banksy yeah well banksy and mr brainwash i did meet mr brainwash oh okay casually at that's a, a really interesting, interesting movie yeah uh to try to sum it up in some way from what i can remember is uh it basically, the the guy gets uh, discarded clothes, right? He gets clothes that are, you know, that that people, other people, don't care about anymore, right? Mm -hmm. And he has like a thrift shop, and he just puts a value on these clothes, and because he puts a high value on these clothes, they become more valuable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's really interesting because you're talking about like the value of art and some of these things. It gets to be like. What is the value? But like he, you know, might take a, a beat up uh, V neck, and it mm -hmm. might be you know three hundred twenty five bucks now. Yeah. And now someone's like, wow, that's a really nice, even though it's the same beat up thing that maybe he bought for six bucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know that, that I think that whole movie is art alone. It I is, think yeah. that uh, 
you know, if you follow the story, it was originally Mr. Brainwash doing a documentary on Banksy, showed it to him. Turned and, into something different. And then yeah. it was like this really weird uh, abstract oh, he was, film. That's right. He was, doing, he was trying to do a movie about a tagger, right? Yeah. And then Banksy turned it around. He's like, you know, let me see all this footage. <laughs> and, and, and it makes you think like, well... Is Andrew, tr- you dig this movie. Is yeah, the yeah, trick on us? Gotta check it out. You yeah, know, you, you'd like it. And that's what I love about these type of artists is they blur the line between what's what's fantasy and what's reality. Right. Um, and then also people still think, is Mr. Brainwash Banksy? You know, <laughs> like that's right. Or there's 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 so many layers to it. Oh and yeah, I, the Andre the Giant. This so is <laughs> a classic. I mean, it, it's <clears throat> it's a classic art film. You know, dude, how good is that Andre the Giant image? That Obey oh, image? Yeah. yeah, that thing's great. That and thing's he's been he's another brilliant artist. I've never met him, but he, I think also just how he branded himself and his ideas, and mm-hmm. how he had images to represent his thought process. Right. And he's not. He, I'm, I don't know what his drawing skills are, but he also shows that to be an artist, that there is no rules, no limits. You can be a designer and print this stuff out and paste it to a wall, and you're still expressing an idea. And that's still an artist. And um, I hope that more kids are exposed to uh, different forms of art, you know, when it comes to whether it's arts media type of stuff, like virtual reality, uh, or whether it's uh, even poster art, that there's so many options. And you don't have to limit yourself to being great at using a pencil. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a great skill. Right. But that's not the <clears throat> only thing. Andre the Giant was ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all over the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, what? actually, well, let's let's say this: different looking. He, he was different looking, but <laughs> because of the obey thing and it becoming so popular, we were talking about Einstein earlier. He's got an ugly mug, <laughs> but it just became so popular that it's so distinctive that you couldn't imagine him looking any other way. Right. And it, it's almost like that's <clears throat> that character, uh, you know, supersedes the person themselves. It actually, makes a lot of sense now that I'm like going through my head of, of images that really stick out. There's, uh, other than, you know, for lack of a better word, there's some ugliness to all of them now that I kind of think about it. There's Keith some Richards, Mick Jagger. Yeah, yeah, some... there's some, like, hard lines where it's, like, somebody like Babe Ruth, who's, you know, one of the greatest uh, athletes in the history of America, mm-hmm. there's even, there was, there's video footage and there's photography of him, but he doesn't really stand out because yeah. he kind of had a, like a rounder, a rounder look. He looked really young. Yeah. He didn't look, he didn't look old. He didn't look grizzled, I guess. You know, it was hard to paint actually. <clears throat> I thought about it. Michael Jordan, mm. his portrait, his face and his features. It doesn't work. It has to be spot on. If you're, if you're not spot on, it's a whole different person. Yeah. And also I, I feel that way about, uh, I didn't paint Marilyn Monroe for years. People would ask me, I'm like, nope, not going to do it. Mar- Marilyn Monroe on the bench press. Yeah. Bench and the dumbbells that, back oh, yeah. in the day. Is you ever a... see that image? No. Oh, oh it's great. So, yeah. I, 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 love, I love that I can like point over like, could you pull it up, please? Yeah. I'm too comfortable with that. <laughs> could you Andrew, it, Could you get it on up it. on the screen? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, actually, that would be cool out there. Yeah, she. Uh, I don't know if it fits the slingshot. It's, brand. it's a. It it fits with everything. It's Marilyn Monroe. She's yeah. beautiful, but it, it uh it's a it's a cool image. And I think it was an image used by uh like women's rights, women's act, women activists and stuff, just yeah. kind of showing, portraying women. You know, doing doing things yeah. doing things a little different, right? That's it, and that's become another really popular image. And you know, what's interesting is finding out what's there she become is. there that's a mm-hmm. that's a really cool photo crossfit and back in the day with the uh, <laughs> like with the sport, jeans sports bra i guess yeah oh yeah the, the jeans. jeans yeah i mean she needs a short short so yeah. huh? actually when i'm on, when i'm on stage performing i feel like i'm working out in like a leather jacket and oh man tight pants it's not i wouldn't sweating recommend it. sweating in jeans feels terrible it when, does. When you first feel like that your shins are getting wet. <laughs> yeah. And it's like sticking. <laughs> Is that a personal thing? Like <laughs> yeah. wet shins? Yeah, wet shins. <laughs> like wet, my shins are wet, I'm done. Well, because it's just, it just uh, starts to like pull your pants all weird. Yeah. You, know we're, I mean? we're getting you the, could blow, you could blow them out. We're getting the deep, dark corners of Mark's mind I know. right now. You need that four-way stretch. Just keep going. <laughs> right? Otherwise you're, keep it going. <laughs> otherwise you're going to blow it, blow them out. That's true. No, I only wear stretchy pants now. Thank God. Someone <laughs> realized that even guys want to wear stretchy pants. Yeah. All right? Yeah, we, we got to be able to pull off our moves, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. So that have you ever gotten yoga. hurt? You ever gotten hurt doing this before? 
No. Uh, but <laughs> like you're slamming paint. You're like, oh my god, my calf. No, no, no. <laughs> what the hell just happened? I had a show one time. I was in uh, Vegas. I don't know if the night before anything to do with it, but I got up at six a.m. I had an eight a.m. show for Microsoft, and I got up. I do these stretches Damn, in the morning. Those guys are early birds. I don't like. <laughs> I get to do like a one p.m. show yeah. like, when I'm awake. But I went up to go do this like kind of yoga stretch. And I just felt this little ping in my neck. I'm, I'm sure you felt this before. Oh, yeah. And then you just Tons feel it coming on. You're like, oh, no. Uh, oh, no. Oh, and the stiff neck starts coming in. And I had to go do the show. What the fuck is that when it happens? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. I was out for like two weeks. I had to. I did like maybe two more shows like that because I, I couldn't contract the neck out of is them. no joke. It was, I, w- I couldn't drive. Somebody calls your name and you're like, what'd you <laughs> yeah. say? <laughs> And you got to be like a robot the whole time, yeah. and you got to be real careful. Oh, like you don't want to fuck with that. Nah, <laughs> it was yeah. So outside of that, but um, yeah. So yeah, not wow. <laughs> what about movies? What kind of movies are you into? Ooh, I mean, I'm I'm a big documentary person. Uh, I love like, I also love sci-fi type of stuff. Like even like Black Mirror. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, I know it's a series, not, not mm-hmm. a movie. But uh, yeah. What else? Uh, I'm trying to think. What I watched last, yeah, honestly, the past six years of my life, I've watched kid movies. Mm. Uh, so how old are your kids? Peter Rabbit is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> great, great film. Uh, they're five and seven. Oh, okay. Incredibles yeah. too. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. They they see all the movies before me, and they're like, "Dad, can we take you to a movie?" I'm like, "That would be so sweet of you." That's great. Uh, I'm trying to think though. Movies. Uh, God, I'm blanking. Would I you? Uh, would you ever want to try to like? direct a movie or like be you know be heavily involved in a film or something like that yeah um yes i think to to seems like it'd be a director or creative director i'm I'm a storyteller i think that no matter what i do i want to tell stories whether it's a performance or whether it's uh through some other form of media i'm I'm more of a storyteller i would actually like to do a a a tv series and uh i like i like putting stuff on the world by the way so going to put this out there. Yeah, throw but, it up. But, um, you know, doing a series based on our art life theme that we have and how art connects life and, and the art that happens in between and the life that happens in between it all as well, all around the world. You know, the art for me has opened so many doors to meet so many different types of people like yourself, um, you know, different countries that we've Me and Obama. To. That's it. And that's it. <laughs> I'm, I'm hanging my hat. I'm done. Game this. over. Yeah. Time to retire. Um, but no, I would, I would even love to... Uh, you know, really even share, you know, more people's struggles and stories around mm-hmm. the world and, and even how art can connect or help that along the way. I'm big into Braveheart, Tombstone, uh-huh. Rocky. Mm-hmm. And then the other day we were talking about Back to the Future. And I think Back to the Future is like one of the greatest family films in the history of movies. You think like so? it's just underrated. Have you Flies ever under the radar? Do you do you ever cry watching movies on the plane? Or is that just me? <laughs> oh yeah, I've cried, yeah. Like that's the I mean I I, I cry I'm an emotional guy. I'm a big baby. But just <laughs> but I'll be I'll be watching, you know, Braveheart on a plane and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good how he killed so many people and got know, revenge. I don't know what it is. Yeah. But I was watching the Millers and I was crying. So just try watching Coco and not crying. Oh, my wife watched that's Ice impossible, Age. Even on flat ground. That's... My wife <laughs> yeah. watched Ice Age on the plane and cried. Okay. You know, and the uh, the mammoth, that whole mammoth uh-huh. story, and that's art. Do you oh, remember yeah. it's drawn out on the wall and it's like shows mm, yeah. the progression of how they're like not around anymore? That's right. <laughs> yeah, that she is sad actually. Cried. <laughs> it was really sad. They're dead. Actually. Well, I made fun of her, but I was like, that's so funny oh, that you're you know crying. What? I will yeah. say this. The, the last time I really had a good uh, cry, <laughs> since we're on the subject, I, I went to go see Hamilton. I, I love like live theater, but I went to go see Hamilton and I'm like, what's the hype about? And no lie, before before they blacked out, right before uh, intermission, I'm just like, tears coming down. Like, they're going to finish the story, right? Like, we're going to come back and sit here. And even near the end, I don't know if you've ever seen Hamilton, but man, it is. it really is a very touching, incredible story. Uh, it hits all, like, the family, pride, ego, history, like, just so many different things. Well, aspects. that goes back to what you said earlier about art having no rules. Yeah. You know, it's like it told from such a uh, different perspective, mm-hmm. um, and it's told at a good time. Mm-hmm. You know, these were all these were all uh, Caucasians, right, in yeah. history at least, and now it's retold in a totally different way with totally different people. I could totally imagine though, like maybe background. like people from the Midwest going, like, "Let's go to Hamilton," oh, and yeah. they're what like, the "Fuck is this?" <laughs> and they're just like. 
back in the Why day. Why is he black? I don't understand. Like, just getting up and being all loud. Yeah. I just, I'm at, like, the shock. Like, hold on. What did I say? It's all rap. It's all hip hop. Yeah. It's really cool. Um, but yeah, I, I was bawling. Awesome. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm being dramatic. I was crying a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, on this podcast, we talk about having like bad training days or coming back after a bad training day mm-hmm. or missing a lift. Have you ever worked on a on a you know a painting and it not coming out exactly how you thought it was going to be? Yes. How do you push forward yes. after that? So I'll say this: um, one of the last NBA finals that I did, uh, it was for the Golden State Warriors, and God bless the Warriors. They're all about the team, like strength in numbers. All of us. And the creative that I want to do, I was like, well, I want to do one of your most popular players because I have six minutes. It's got to be distinctive, and I want the whole audience to, to buy into it. They're like, nope, we don't want to feature any singled out players. Mm. We want uh, all these hands reaching up towards the trophy. I'm like, that's not fun to do. That's boring. And I said, I want to do a figure because that's it'll flow. It'll be a great, entertaining performance. They're like, well, if you do a player, it's got to be like full body and can't look like any of the players. So I'm like... All right, this is what I have to do. And I'm thinking like, all right, I, I didn't I didn't have my gut was telling me no. I'm like, no, this is not feel right. And I should have listened to it. We did it. And there was other pieces to it. But afterwards, like, I just felt like like it 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 was not a great painting mm. at all. And mainly because it didn't connect with the audience. The whole audience is like, who's it supposed to be? Is is that Kyrie Irving <laughs> on the on the on the What Warriors? did you uh, what did you learn from that experience? To to follow my gut feeling. I had another recent. So, like maybe uh, your assistant or whoever sets up some of these things uh, would would communicate like on on what it is you're gonna do before yeah. you get there, right? Like, yeah, I'll add hey, another one. You know, he he was probably not gonna do that. Yeah, just so you're aware, like, but he might lean more towards. There could be some compromise. Yeah, but you just don't want to get to, a yeah. better idea of the creative. There's another one we we did a huge show for McDonald's. It's for like their global like summit with all the owners for their from French all over the fries. world. <laughs> French fries. <laughs> and uh, again, we went back and forth on creative for months. They And they probably changed their direction. We're like, all right, this is a cool idea. A week later, like, so we're changing the direction. You're like, I'm drawing the Hamburglar. He's underrated. Nobody ever talks about <laughs> and, him. And, and no lie, like the, the creative just got more simple and simple and simple. And now here's the thing. They're paying very, very well. All right. And I wanted to give them my best. Like America's Got Talent, you know, type of level of performance. And uh, just very complicated and, and entertaining and they're like nope we just want the simple m on this like background so like, all right let me let me try to complicate this at least somehow and honestly when we were done it was okay and i just i felt more like shit afterwards because i wasn't i didn't believe in that you almost so, felt like another artist could do it of, of course and i think what's special about what i do is i want to do something that people feel like no one else could do that's where I feel like I, I shine and I work towards. And then I was like, I've got to, I have to stick to my gut now because, so coming back from that, I couldn't wait for my next show or the next thing to just do something that I loved. And it was, it, that's, it's, it's like losing a, it's like losing a game. Like yeah. I feel like shit when I leave. Walked away with an like L. That. Yeah. It's huge L, a big M. <laughs> <laughs> a big well, M. With everything going digital. You know, you have a Microsoft Surface Pro. You can paint on it. Mm-hmm. Where do you think art's gonna go? Like, what's the direction now? Um, like, especially like you know, wet paint. You know. Yeah. You know, I was just having a conversation with someone about this the other day mm-hmm. because virtual reality painting mm-hmm. is becoming more popular. It's not as popular because it's so expensive. Like the the hardware is not expensive, but the machine to run it is like three to five thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So it's not as accessible. But the minute it is, I feel like people I. Th- at some point, paint may be obsolete for a paint performance, for what I do at least. And so that's why I'm kind of dabbling into more virtual reality painting, just to be ready, mm-hmm. just to be comfortable with it, to understand what it is or what I can do with it. Virtual but, reality is weird. Oh, it's... Have you have I, you put yeah, on an Oculus messed, before? I messed around with some of it. It's Ooh. fucking... It's weird when you're like, when you get done, I'm like, yeah, what's going to happen with this kind of shit? I remember I... So I got the Oculus Go. And because I, I was getting this and they have this like painting program on there. But I was like, hmm, what else is on here? And I'm like surfing <laughs> the web, like sitting in my bed, like 
no clothes on, just surfing the web. I was just going to say, everything switches <laughs> Take to that porn. Visual in and I'm so <laughs> everything sorry. switches to porn right away. Like somebody makes this billion dollar industry of like virtual reality and boom, everything just turns right, right yeah. into that. But right even, off the bat. But like they have those, so there's this Netflix app on there. Mm. And in the Netflix app, it's, uh, you're like in a theater or you're like in this like beautiful like cabin. And I'm, I'm like just watching a movie. And after a while, I'm like, where am I? Hold on. Oh, you get sucked into this. And right. so I, I do not want to put it on my kid's head because uh, I just it, it it does really suck you in and it's it's sort of unreal and it's so endless. Now, with that said, being a creator, it's a great tool for the future, mm-hmm. and it's barely it's barely been tapped into. And yeah. I think part of it is because of the accessibility, right. but also the I think the like user friendly aspect of it. It's you know it looks you look funny and you're alone. Right. You don't really do it with anyone else. <laughs> yeah. So. There's some other aspects to it that are weird. Like I've heard people talk about how you can be in a certain place and like take a selfie there. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's weird. And so like, it, but it but it wouldn't be you with the goggles on, but like you could be anywhere. Like yeah. you can be in Greece and you can, you know, you could you could just be wherever you want almost. Yeah. And so like that might become a like a social media thing, which would be. Yeah, you know. You know, it just <laughs> starts to sound crazy, right? Uh, but I, I, I would add to that the positive side is uh, storytellers. That say for example, I'm just gonna go down this rabbit hole. Uh, a good writer or something. You're you're, you're, you're it, walking yeah. into a room and then you have choices now, and there's a, there's something happening, and there's characters that go each way, and no matter and whatever character mm. you follow, there's a different outcome, <clears throat> right. and so on, and it can just kind of keep breaking up. And every time you watch this movie or this this play, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's a different outcome every single time, and so. For me, I'm like, there's so many possibilities. I would love to, even again, I, w- I would love to do something where people can put them on, tune in from around the world, and do a performance in my studio or, you know, wherever else we are. So yeah. uh, there's there's a lot of great possibilities. There's also a lot of really sick aspects to it that I'm yeah. afraid of. Um, what about uh, using images? Have you ever, like, done an image of somebody and they get all pissed off, even though you just, like, were kind of doing it for fun? Yeah. So that's a great <laughs> question. Uh <laughs> Uh, so the Einstein estate reached out and they're like, Hey, you know, you can't do this. Cause we were, and, and really what we realized is we can create original paintings and when you create prints, there's like this fine line. And so I had a, my very well-paid attorney <laughs> respond to them. And basically there are, thank God there are laws that protect creators and creative people. And because it's altered so it's a different way, and also it's we're not using the Einstein name and copyright brands. It's also like fair use, right, of people that are popular, people mm. throughout time. There's some You'd fair usage of some of it or not really. You'd be surprised. Uh, to a certain point, when there's no, I think when there's no estate or foundation that's managing the mm. intellectual property, you can get away with it. Uh, or if you're creative enough and you change some things up. So, uh, I, so yeah, we've had certain people reach out. We're just like, nah. <laughs> here you go. Here's the law, right? That protects us. And then my attorney's like, "And here's your bill." <laughs> <laughs> right. Responding. What's up with your fitness? What you Ooh. What you doing with your training and stuff like that? So before I came here, I ate 13 egg yolks, <laughs> <laughs> a thousand push-ups with a slingshot. Damn. That's you can't, can't, That's not bad. Catch up because you used to train at uh, Ryan Soper's gym, right? Yeah, in, yeah. Uh, so I used to train there. Man, I've done so many things. So my uh, fitness history, uh, I was always a big kid. That's when I, I played football. I played with kids that were bigger big? than me. Big? What are we talking about? Fat? I was fat. Okay. All right. I was I was a chubby. I was <laughs> a chubby it kid. Down. You got you had some chub. And we were the same weight, but they were muscle, and I was fat. Mm. And when we hit each other, I cried and I hit the ground. <laughs> You're like, man, I'm squishier than that so, guy for some reason. I've always, I've always fluctuated with my weight. I've always, like, I've never been like thin per se. Maybe there was a period where I was running a lot, but I love cardio. So when I was 20, 21, 22, I was like, man, I need to change. So I started cutting my food in half and like, at the time, I did, I did everything. Started running and I used to weigh 250 plus pounds, you know, almost 260. And I lost like 50 pounds hmm. in like six months to like a year you. you know and then i would say from then on i've always kind of fluctuated between like 200 and what over 200 and 220 ish and then uh and i kind of just i don't know i've always been in and out i'll like i used to train with a guy keto andrews at uriah fitness or uriah faber's gym right. like muay thai and like crossfit type of cool. stuff so I, I was i'm always in and out but i do always stay consistent and uh, do a lot of cardio and i do uh and i have a t-rex set up in my house mm. Because what I do is so physical. 
Right. I mean, literally, if you watch a show, I'm doing. You can imagine even the practices. Uh, it's a, it's like a CrossFit workout in a leather jacket. <laughs> <laughs> so I do a lot of cardio. I'm actually doing a, a thing called All City Ride with a friend of mine, Abs. He's a, he has a gym, and so he, we're, we're going to test out this, like— Of course Abs has a yeah. gym. <laughs> I would hope so. He should yeah. have Abs. He's a baker. No. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to go do this. I love, uh, like, the like the, the team ride type of stuff. You know, I, I love cardio. Uh, do you love food? I love food! <laughs> yeah, why? It's so hard. Food's so good. Uh, I also—and then I— I just did a thing called Reset Health. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, um, but it really helped me. Uh, it really helped me with my my diet. Because one thing like I an app or something. No, no, no. It's uh, it's a program. It's here locally. There's a, a doctor that kind of started this thing. Cool. And it just helped me with like understand food better. Mm. And so now it's. I mean, I I can keep the weight off. Be and or I like deflated basically from how I used to be maybe uh, months ago, but. It's helped me just make better choices and when to eat and when not to eat. But I still love food. Do they uh, do they, they teach you about food? Yes. Yeah, so it's like an education program. And Is it online or in person? Days, or? It's, it's online. They do meetups as well. It's kind of like community-based education. That's awesome. Education. I mean, that's, a, that's the biggest problem is that people uh, don't have all the weapons that they need to kind of fight it off. Because yes, people, yes. always, people always think they're hungry. And it's like, yeah, I understand that you're hungry for now, but you have to... We got to get past this. You got to kill off that hunger hormone a little bit. Yeah. So you, even if you like uh, foods that are that you view as being delicious, and you're kind of uh, you know quote unquote addicted to them, yeah, those are still okay as long as we're not you know overindulging and not moving. Yeah, and sugar was my big thing. Where yeah. uh, I basically through the ninety days, I didn't eat sugar for the most part. I do love wine, so I would say that's where my sugar came from, yeah. or Tito's. That's a and John stuff. Cena uh, diet. Is that yeah, wine? Yeah, his carbs only come from wine. Yeah. I'm, that's a weird... Well, I'm going to look just like him. Yeah, just give me is. like 18 years. Uh, <laughs> but no, I and I cut out uh, sugar. That was a huge thing. Even just that alone, uh, I well, I say deflated because you know what it's like when you're like dieting, doing different things. Yeah. I just was like a little puffier. <laughs> yeah. And then I cut that out. And then I started uh, just eating more like high fat, high protein type of food. Started to feel better, I bet. Yeah, I felt like I had more energy and also mental clarity. Um, that was another big thing, taking sugar out of the uh, of the diet. So now, now after the program's over, I dab a little, but not like I used to. Mm. I would I would eat like so horrible on the road. I'm like, it's 1130 <laughs> and I earn this double <clears throat> Western bacon <laughs> barbecue sauce cheeseburger right and ice cream <laughs> and pizza <laughs> well it's amazing because there's so like we have so much access mm -hmm. it's so convenient to get to it and we're you know inundated with so many commercials and billboards it's just it's everywhere yeah well yesterday i was watching something on netflix it's uh why diets fail mm. i was also ordering from postmates at the time <laughs> <laughs> i'm like i wonder why all right get this here but <laughs> yeah. no i i you know since i started really my journey in early 20s of, of like losing weight initially and then i think just fluctuating in a sense of you just look like life. you've lost weight from last time i saw you even. yes but I didn't want to say that right away because I don't know you that well. So I didn't want you to be I like. I wore the white pants for you. You guys can't see this, but I don't know how. Yeah. yeah. I got the white pants on for you. Did you drop 10, 15 pounds from that time Ish. or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. I just, again, just deflated. Uh, I feel great. I always feel comfortable naked. So oh. for me, I'm like, how do these clothes look? I'm going right. for European uh, <laughs> cut suit kind of weight. That's what I'm going for. And then uh, for exercise nowadays, do you get a chance to do much or you haven't been? Uh, it's every it's every now and then. I always do cardio. I always run or ride. Uh, I've been riding. My assistant's just here. She can attest to this. I ride my mm. bike into the studio. We're like 12 blocks from my house. Oh, so awesome. I, I get a little ride in. Um, it's just getting in where I can. I love running when I can. So Does I, running help you think? Like do you throw um, on some headphones or do you just go and it run? It makes me feel like I'm performing. So my my shows that are on average – Let's just say 45 minutes, four paintings on average. I speak in between. It's like a whole keynote. No, I didn't experience. know you did four, four paintings in one, one time. On, on, and, uh, and so I'm, I'm constantly used, like, used to going and then breathing. So what I do is to, in a sense, train for a show is I'll go for a run. I'll run like faster for, say, six to eight mm -hmm. minutes and then slow it down a little bit. So I don't know if, that, if there's a term for that. but Yeah. Yeah. There's some sort of term. But. <laughs> yeah. But I, I also can, uh, love like circuit training. I love, uh, you know, doing a, going hard. Yeah. You know, weight training is so beneficial because it, uh, 
it'll last longer mm -hmm. if you can have some consistency with some weights. And you don't have to be a meathead. You don't have to be in the gym all the time. But some resistance training can just do uh, your do do your body some real uh, wonders because your body will then kind of work for you rather than you having to work the calories off all the time. So if you can simply just work on hitting a gym, you know, twice a week or something like that, it could be a huge benefit to you, especially down the road as we get older, mm -hmm. uh, the bone density and things like that. But when you go for a run, you basically just burn the calories at that moment. And yeah. there's been some research and science to show that you may burn it throughout the day a little bit too, mm -hmm. but that's kind of where it ends. So cardio, I always tell people cardio is for now. Mm -hmm. Muscle is for long term. Yeah. And so if you have a little bit extra muscle, then you can afford the Western bacon cheeseburger. It's <laughs> true. A little bit more. You're speaking my language. <laughs> here and there. So that would be my only advice is like, if you can, if you can get in some resistance training here and there, it might. It How do you might, feel um, about the TRX Type, yeah, that's good. Of, that's uh, that's resistance. That's resistance. Okay. Yeah, any form. It's just that you want to have uh, enough resistance to the point where you're not like brutally sore. Yeah. But the muscle should be pretty like kind of taxed. You know, you yeah. should you should kind of feel it. And if you don't feel it, then the stimulus might not be great enough mm -hmm. to uh, get the same result. But even if you have the TRX, um, get a couple dumbbells and okay. just do a, just a, a little bit can go a long way. Just doing some uh, shoulder presses and bicep mm -hmm. curls and just, it doesn't have to be complicated. Yeah. You just bang it out and, and yeah. there you go. Not everybody yeah. loves to do all these weird things that we do. Yeah. I, I'm all for the, uh, the T-Rex sells with the travel, but man, I think, I feel like I've been to every hotel gym yeah. in the world. Like, I mean, and they've seen some bad ones and there's yeah. some other that are like, just on point. Yeah, they got everything sometimes. Yeah. yeah, we were just on the road. We were messing around at the uh, the hotel gym. It was okay, <clears throat> but when you're talking about food, we were at IHOB in the middle of the night. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, but uh, so being on the road, it's, it's tough to mm -hmm. you know. It's it's cool that you're being more conscious about what you're putting in your body. Yeah. Have you ever had to go from like eating something bad, getting off a plane, and rushing straight to one of these 45 minute shows? Oh yeah. And something not sitting in your stomach. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> and possibly so I, get so that I, I, try, I try not to eat I try not to eat uh, at least an hour before the show mm -hmm. but sometimes when I I haven't eaten them and I have this like excuse mindset where I'm like all right I earned this burger 30 minutes before a show mm -hmm. and I haven't earned it mm -hmm. with working out and then, yeah I feel like yeah, I mean I'm, I'm I cannot wait to get done with the show yeah any epic poop stories from anything <laughs> like that <laughs> like post show <laughs> If whatever, <laughs> no mid show. I, you know, mid -show, I, yeah. I, I know. I would say this like, when you change when I change Adds my diet. Adds to the paint. Yeah. <laughs> well, when, I, when I change my diet, it your got poop better. changes. Yeah, poop got better. You know, we we get a lot of people. Um, you know, I, I promote a, a low carbohydrate diet okay. just because I think it really helps yeah. a lot of people that have struggled with their weight for most mm -hmm. of their life. Uh, it helps them shift gears and it gets them into a little bit more comfortable spot where they can manage eating less food. Cause that really is what it ends up being all about in some, yeah. in some regard. Uh, but when I tell people about this kind of diet th immediately, they're, um, they're like, man, I, I'm not going to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, cause you're not eating crappy food all day. Like, you spend, yeah. you spend a lot of hours on the toilet yeah. when you're eating those junky foods and when you're eating uh, so frequently. Yeah. Have you ever messed around with uh, some intermittent fasting before? Have you heard of that? I have. Before? Yeah. So part yeah. of the program that I did, the Reset Health program. Uh, I really is, like intermittent fasting a lot. I think there, it works really well. That was part of it. And it was like, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was like waiting. I, I would basically, I would eat between the hours of like, let's say earliest 1130 to 12, kind of noonish if I got normal sleep. And then I would, wouldn't eat past maybe six o'clock ish. And then any food that I put in my body at the time was like, high fat, high protein, like right. just like good, like good food. And, uh, you know, obviously mixing in the, uh, the Steak, greens. Steak, salmon, things yes. like that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which Avocado. I love all that. Uh, and so, yeah, that was part of the program. And I still kind of do that now, uh, as much as I, as I can, you know, is just kind of right. eat during a certain time and just, I cut almost completely cut out late night food as well. Oh, that's huge. Oh. Yeah. Cutting out stuff that, uh, it's like 10 o'clock and you don't have a lot of great choices mm -hmm. at that time. There's no great, there's nothing, even outside of food, there's no great choices after 10 o'clock. No, it's kids. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. <laughs> Get your asses in bed. <laughs> you know, the interesting thing about, about healthy food though, is that I think maybe when you're a kid, you don't have the palate for it because uh, you're exposed to some other things that are really flavorful. Oh yeah. You know, you have uh 
Count Chocula and uh, <laughs> Fruity Pebbles and all these yeah. like magical things that, that uh, taste really good. And they just have so much flavor. Dorito mm -hmm. just popping with so much flavor. And so when mom says you got to finish your Brussels sprouts or something, it's a really hard task because you're like, yeah. I don't want to mess with that. But a lot of the foods that we end up using for diet and end up using to lose weight, they taste really good. Yes. Like not everybody's a fan of fish, but salmon can be really good. Yeah. If you don't like fish, there's so many different cuts of steak that you can mm -hmm. choose from. That can be seasons, you know? They can be, yeah. they can be awesome. They can yeah. be amazing. And, and when you, my point too is always like you go to a restaurant and like, the most expensive thing on the menu is not the mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. It's the steak. Yeah. You know, and the steak's nutrient dense and it's, um, it's, per it's prepared. It takes a long time to even prepare it. You know, sometimes they're aged, mm -hmm. you know, for X amount of days or whatever it is they're yeah. doing, you know? So, uh, I find it interesting. And then whenever you talk to anybody and they say that they started to eat better, it was like, I feel so much better. Oh Yeah. But then there we end up in that same trap again. Yeah, and I think, but that's also part of reality is just understanding sort of the cycles of life. Right. You know, that, that, uh, th actually, the thing that I was uh, watching, Why Diets Fail, is a documentary. Is a documentary. It's, it's oh, actually it Vox has a series of, I think it's called like uh, Explained, mm. something like that. And one of them was about diets. Right now, it said down. one of the biggest reasons why people don't finish or the diets fail is because people don't finish the diet. And then also they said on average, people do about five to seven diets in a lifetime. Mm. And uh, I can relate to that. Yeah. Almost sure. everybody loses weight too, by the way. Yeah. So America doesn't have a problem with losing weight. They've got a problem with keeping it off. Yes. And, and part of it is what they showed is as equally as we're being sold this easy one, two, three diet process, right. we're also sold as equally the, or even more this easy one, two, three convenient food uh, mm. as well. And, uh, you know, being on the road and one of my biggest pet peeves is being in a hotel where there's no food past 10. Uh, it's a good thing now for me because I'm like, I really don't need to eat late night food. But, uh, but yeah, I just, I, it's, it's a journey, you know, especially like when I realized when I first lost weight and I was even conscious about it, I've fluctuated and, you know, it's just part of life. There's a movie called That Sugar Movie. That's a documentary as well. Mm -hmm. And I was watching it the other day and the guy, he ordered some chicken and he just took spoonfuls of sugar <laughs> and just was dumping it on there. Yeah. And it's like, whoa, what is he doing? But all he was doing is try to, trying to eat the uh, same amount of sugar that everybody else eats in a day. Yeah. And so his point was like, this is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. um, in, in this uh, film, he does like X amount of days of uh, consuming sugar from things that you wouldn't really recognize having sugar. So yeah. he doesn't have any candy bars. He doesn't mm -hmm. have any... Uh, any ice cream like or anything sauces else. Sauces or? I think he has some sauces and some, uh, you know, fruit juices and okay. things, oh, things yes. that are kind of labeled. Oh, man. You know, fruit fake. was a big thing too. There's a lot of sugar. Yeah. And, and just things that are kind of labeled as like fake health, you know, they're not, yeah. they're, they're labeled as being healthy. I mean, if you look at like kids stuff, does it all the time. Mm -hmm. Loaded with vitamin C. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, well, Next that's a hell of a way sugar. of putting it, you know? Yeah. There's 40 grams of sugar in there for somebody who's not even three feet tall yet. It's like, What's funny crap. is uh, the other day I was, with, I was with my kids in the car. I'm like, hey, you guys hungry? They're like, no, nope, not hungry. I'm like, you want ice cream? Yeah, I could go for some of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, immediately like, I could eat that. Yeah, yeah. That's just going to feel good for the moment. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to be uh, hung <laughs> hungry for any of that. Yeah. What's next for you? What do you got going on? Uh, so I mentioned it earlier. Uh, we are tour. working on a, a nationwide tour later this year. Uh, for my world, what we that's never been done. So I'm kind of into like what hasn't been done. Uh, we also what's that tour look like uh, so uh, far? With so it's like some a, of the sketching out of what you're doing. Sixty minute plus show. So we actually did the first show at Ace of Spades last November. Oh, cool. uh, we'll actually do it again. Our Sacramento stop will be at Ace of Spades again. Uh, but we were blessed enough that it sold out. But we're going back. We we go to all these cities across the country, and people was asking like, when are you gonna come to my city? And they usually like private events or they're at colleges or it's hard to get tickets for. So we're we're working with these venues and with these promoters and presenters that can make it more accessible. So people can pay a $25 ticket. And the, the show is like going like a blue man group show, but uh, it's paint. And I do about up to eight paintings in this hour ish show. But there's also this, we, I just started a nonprofit creator X. So I partner with my former high school art teacher, animation teacher. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, we are doing an art camp in July, July 12th and 13th. It's about a month. 120 students from the Sacramento area. Uh, they're all young and creative, but also maybe not have had 
the opportunity that other students have had. But we're bringing in professionals from, say, Pixar, uh, this guy, Van Partable, who started the the, uh, the cartoon Johnny Bravo. He's mm-hmm. coming into, and there's, and there's cool. others that are going to work alongside <clears throat> and teach the students, but also uh, give keynotes as well. So it's like a tech conference, but for kids. And uh, our goal with Creator X is to kind of really grow that over time and to eventually, hopefully, a school one day. That's that's the ultimate. To be able to do stuff digitally, do you have to be uh, gifted in the same way? It depends on what you're doing digitally. Uh, You'd have to be, like, you know, creative, I guess. But beyond that, maybe you don't need the same skill set as a hand-eye. Um, I think you have to be observant. Right. Uh, you know, you think about uh, 3D animation. Because really anyone can can carve something out or, or mold a shape on a computer. Right. But to be observant enough to know that you need to take a little bit more curve on this shape. Or if you're building a face, the eyes need to be in the socket just a little bit more to observe the fact that what creates shadows is the depth of that object right. and where the lighting is from. And so being observant of those type of things in, in the world and life will help you go further than actually just being able to draw. Right. Um, and also there's so many other jobs too, you know, being a director where, so Sullivan's class, the Canine Studios, it's at Sheldon High School. That's where I went to school. It was named the best animation program in the world by the Walt Disney Family wow. Foundation. That's crazy. So he's he's on another was level. Was that just by, I mean, was that, was, was that by design? Did you uh, go? It, it just, it's, you know. Or you just ended up going to that school? You no, know, I just, it was by a, a plan bigger than me. How yeah. I even ended up there. I wasn't supposed to go there. That's crazy. So, and even meeting him at a certain time in my life. That's uh, uh, like Bill Gates, like the, his dad, like if I can remember the story, his dad like lost his job or something happened where they had to move. Mm-hmm. And when they moved, they went to one of the, uh, one of the high schools that was one of the first high schools that, uh, was equipped with computers. Mm-hmm. And it's like, holy shit. Yeah. And, and and because Sullivan, again, is so curious about how can we change education through art, him and I are actually doing a keynote talk on Thursday to Sacramento area teachers about arts integration. And we're sharing about our story. And I'll be performing. It's, well, it's kind of a new thing that I'm really doing with him with Creator X and growing this. Uh, but actually, if you go to creatorx.org, there's more info about that. And uh, so I'm really excited about that. This is a whole new venture that we've raised a lot of money for other people. And this is my first time, uh, dedicating my time to a, a really single cause. That's awesome. I'm really excited. I think you'll that. have a lot of fun doing that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Any, anything else over there, Andrew? No, I was just going to ask, yeah, where you went to high school, but you just answered that. And, yeah. You know, before we started recording, you were talking about how much you love the area and, you know, we rep Sacramento really hard over here. So it's fucking awesome to yeah. meet you and you know, Sacramento. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, the, you know, the mutual love for Sacramento is awesome. Yeah. So I really appreciate you that. You know, I would add to that. I, I love this city. Um, mm-hmm. I was born in L.A. My dad brought us here when we were five. Again, I think part of a bigger plan. And, uh, you know, just growing up here, I will say even the past 10, 15 years, to be a part of a city that we can actually be part of the change, that's rare. In any, maybe, there's, maybe there's some places in Ohio that are up and coming, you know, or maybe like in Florida, but... Sacramento, it, it really is our time, and we're creating a culture here. We're creating our voice, mm-hmm. and I get to I get to be an artist. I'm like part of this grand picture. The fact that you're here doing this uh, across the street from me is a huge building of creatives that are you know living and working and creating. And the fact that that even exists, I'm proud to be from a city that provides that opportunity. Awesome! I think it's all the time we got. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later. <laughs>